Hello, everybody. I'm so excited to be hosting another webcast because I've been following this lady for quite a long time. We brought on Caroline Newman, commonly, I don't know whether I should say commonly known as the dance lady or maybe <laughs> AKA the dance lady. Um, the reason I wanted to bring her on because, you know, the breadth of uh, FitPro, we look at all things fitness and I wanted to talk about kids' fitness you know, why we should get into it, some of um, Caroline's predictions and stuff like that. So Caroline, it's amazing to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you. And it's funny because actually, yeah, maybe I'm, I might be common, but not common in as there's loads of people who teach kids fitness. We're quite unique. So that's really funny. <laughs> you know, when things just come out and you go, mm, not so sure, but that's exactly right. You know, we've been talking about that and this is why we wanted to talk about it. This is, um, I've worked in kids fitness. I know you do an amazing job in what you're doing and sort of promoting, you know, how amazing it can be. And this is why we're going to talk about some of the predictions that you think, um, you know, are going to really sort of set people's classes alight and stuff like that. So, but I'm I'm just ultra aware that people listening to this may have been in the industry for as long as you and me. You've had a you know a long history with FitPro, um, but I'm aware that there are some people just looking for something new, and they may be stepping into the industry. We know that there's a level two entry course, so some people may not have ever worked with adults, but they're now sort of exploring listening to this webcast because they're either been in the industry for a million years or they're thinking about stepping into it. So we're going to cover that as well. So I want to hit you with a first question. Why don't you think more people work with kids in oh, our industry? It's such, such a brilliant question. And if I could give you in one word, I would, I can't, and I don't really know. But my thinking is, and this is going to be the wrong term, but working with kids is just not sexy enough, but that's completely the wrong word. But it's not, it's not cool like being a PT. There's no um, kudos to it that it's, uh would you, i think kids fitness is almost seen as a little bit of a hobby activity in the fitness world we don't quite have the same pizzazz as a pilates instructor and that sort of stuff um because yeah. when you think about it lots of stuff that we do with kids whether this be swimming lessons or after school care it's seen perhaps as um a necessity minimal requirement minimal skills that kind of thing which when you work with kids, you know, it's definitely not minimum skills. Not at all. In fact, it's, um, it's fascinating hearing you say that because you're, you're right. It's, it's, it's the sort of maybe not as glamorous as I know what you're glamorous. trying to say with those yeah. words. You know, I, I kind of, I get it. Um, what we have to remember though, is that basically what we are introducing kids to exposing them to and stuff is going to set them off on a, you know, their their life, their journey and stuff like that. So it's such an essential thing, isn't it? That's it. To be... We're working next generation, aren't we? Absolutely, absolutely. So, all right. So then if, if you recognising that not many people are doing it right now, tell me some positives of why it's so great to work with kids. Um, I think the biggest thing that I get out working with kids and have done since the last sort of 20 years I've been doing it, is that they are in the moment and uh, they will enjoy pretty much anything that you can do with them. So, although saying that, if you've not really prepared and so on, they will see through that straight away. So you can't wing it, but you can wing it at the same time. Um, but yeah, if you're there and you're giving them something enjoyable to do and it's exciting and achievements, little things like, oh, I don't know, they can now hold a plank position more or do press ups or run faster or do a cartwheel, whatever it may be that you're doing in your sessions. They are so into that. And it's those skills that will take them forward to do other more sort of activities and health well-being. Yeah. yeah. And I think, yeah, you're so right. They're in the moment. But I I feel that you can capture their interest yes. in in a way that, you know, maybe with adults. I still do. I use play with adults, you know. Oh, yeah. But some, but But kids can, you know, I don't know, step into that moment a little bit quicker. If you're enthusiastic, prepared, planned, 
it's relevant to them as well because and we're going to be talking about maybe predictions and trends of what will suit them but I think one of the things is about being prepared but also um, for me what I absolutely adored about it was no class was ever the same I couldn't I could I literally could if I thought I planned everything something else I had to come up with you know suddenly yeah. and, that, and that made it exciting and it made it it made it full of variety for me and yeah. actually working with kids has made me better with working with adults yes absolutely you've got to think in your feet sometimes um so a lot of my work i work in schools um and uh, if you're not someone who go in schools and or you don't have children in schools anything can happen in a school so the hall which you thought you were going to be using is now a library uh the the dinner ladies haven't cleaned up after and so you're having to dodge carrots um <laughs> it can be and and the weather for example if it's windy and rainy and the kids haven't been able to go out for play they are up here already um and also if they haven't been out to be able to get out to play they are up here already <laughs> So there's just so many things that, you know, you don't just rock up and think, right, okay, here we go. Step touch, put the music on. It's not, it's not that. No, you, you've got to be like that. And you, you're never getting bored, are you, working with kids? Let's be no, honest. You're, ne you're never getting bored. And <laughs> um, yeah, and yeah, on that point, you can't rest on your laurels. You've got to be ready with the answers <clears throat> to some fascinating questions and um things like oh what was the best the lovely little one I had um she said oh I'm I'm leaking I'm leaking and I said you're leaking and she said I'm leaking and then she was sweating but basically this little child hadn't really thought about sweating or had sweated more than perhaps she ever had before and and so we were then able to talk about why she was sweating and what it was good and not to be scared of as well so some of these children may not have experienced stuff like that and so yeah i'm leaking that's, that's so cute bless her yeah and you have to you actually have to be very good at answering some of the questions as well because yeah. sometimes you know there's some interesting questions isn't it like i say you're never going to be bored so um what do you think makes a great instructor or someone who's going to work with kids what do you think it takes we've took you've said about being prepared but what else what else uh, good sense of humor you've got to have a sense of humor and uh, a creative mind so most people in the fitness industry are quite creative anyway but then taking that creativity level to another level um because if you're playing say a game of tag after a couple of weeks, those kids are going to be bored of just playing the tag that way. So you've got to be thinking, right, how can I make this game a little bit more exciting, take it up, raise the bar, that sort of thing. So a uh, sense of humour, creativity, um, I don't know, just passion and enthusiasm. But I suppose we all have passion and enthusiasm, but just that little bit more, like I said, because they aren't mm -hmm. like our regular clients that come to Pilates, yoga, personal training, that sort of thing. They're not, not going to necessarily say, hey, look, I've now achieved this in my fitness goals. They're not they're not going to be doing that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Now, one of the things when I used to teach as a tutor adults how to teach kids, um, one of the things that because we'd explore, you know, what might be some of the difficulties that you might might face. And actually, a lot of people were really kind of nervous about dealing with behavior yeah. and nervous dealing with the kids that are sort of like just they're they're just not interested. You know, this is and, and so you disengage. This is it. And so I, the reason I sort of said that was because, you know, don't forget if they're doing tag in your class, they've probably been doing tag at every single other fitness thing as well. So they can reach a sort of saturation point, can't they? And so I think behavior and that nervousness of to know what to do, I think a lot of that is, um, you know, if, if you are prepared, fun, sense of humor, you respect them, you, you know, you set up some boundaries that they know it's a sort of safe place and all those sort of things. I think it's not as scary a thing, but what are your yeah. thoughts on, dealing with that because I, I genuinely do pe believe people maybe haven't had a lot of experience of kids 
you know, a lot of people might think they have to be a parent in order to work with kids. But what are your thoughts on that? Do, do, do you struggle with that or do you think people could struggle with it? I think it's a brilliant point and I haven't thought of it in that way only because I'm just so used to dealing with so many behaviours now and I think we're now seeing so much more about people um, being diagnosed with ADHD in a later life and so we know we see a lot of kids with who have ADHD and other not necessarily behaviour problems but issues and, and more concepts to mm. them um, so I think it's with anything like that, if you were new to the industry and you believe that you might be working with children that are going to have challenges or extra levels with them, then knowledge is going to be power, but not necessarily knowledge that you're going to read in a book or do in a course. Go and speak to their main caregivers. The parents will be able to say to you what fires them, what what can trigger them, what can they... And then also be very aware that when you're working with children who may have different things going on, they can be very different in an active class. Um, so some of my, um, they're not naughty, that's the wrong word. Some of my more active kids um, <laughs> are a pleasure to work with because ultimately they are finding it very hard to stand still because they just have their fidgets about them. So as long as you've given that and them the space and um, the guidelines of what you want them to do. So for example, on Friday, I've got a little lad where we do dance and we've been um, working towards a dance festival. Before I see him in the classroom, I'll say to him, go run around the playground three times and then come in. And as long as he's run around the playground three times, his brain is then ready to learn to engage. And they still have the fidgets and they still do some random things and they still misunderstand the concept of personal space to himself and the others. But he's channeled, he's channeled that energy a little bit. Absolutely. And you're making that space for him. Imagine, this is a thing, isn't it? A lot of the time kids struggle in those um, sort of sessions, not fitness sessions, but do struggle in mainstream. I mean, I would struggle just having to be with that many people, you know, constantly through the day. So, you know, fitness can be um, sort of a release valve. A relief, but if it's, safe, you know, if it's safe and you say what you expect rather than telling them off and stuff like that, I think then they just feel like, oh, feel a bit of a sense of freedom and I think that's a beautiful thing to create so you are known as a dance lady how on earth did that come up <laughs> well I'm like probably the luckiest person in the fitness industry that I've never had to spend any money on branding and marketing or anything like that um the dance lady has purely come from when I turn up a rock up at schools you usually get the admin lady who will go oh the dance lady's here and then they'll be ringing through to the class or sending someone down the dance lady the lady who comes and does the dance and, she's here. <laughs> and you can usually hear yay um and it's lovely I mean that is exactly what it is I do dance predominantly so I'm very different to the I don't know the piano person or the um <laughs> line lady or whatever it might be um, I think that's great yeah yeah and it's lovely when you go into a, a school and um so uh, children are very used to now understanding what their routine of their day is going to look like so it's always um literacy and, and uh, maths and so on in the morning followed by you know maybe like PSHE, something like that. And then when you see dance ladies in, it's good, the kids can see that. And also coming back to those children that um, struggle a little bit with concentration and, and behavior issues, that if they know they've got that coming up, they can focus towards that on either making sure they're going to be able to attend that session or looking forward to that session. Yeah, I love that, I love that. Like you say, not spend any money on branding never lots of people so lots of people take forever trying to come up with their name the concept and yeah yeah it was yes. easy for you i love it i love it um so let's talk about some predictions i was fascinated to to hear what you had said that you thought the predictions were um we're going to go by one over them one by one um the first one you mentioned was outdoors for kids fitness tell me briefly about why you know what do you think well uh, after our lockdowns, we're all used to being outdoors um, more, and I think people have just grabbed that concept. And look at us in, in the in the British weather, 
we are quite good at just sort of getting on with it and, and doing stuff. Um, and we all know the outdoor world, the outdoor fitness. Just look at the things like um, uh, free swimming, open swimming, outdoor swimming is rocketed now, hasn't it? You know, yeah, there's, absolutely. yeah, so we're very used to that. So outdoor fitness for kids, whether that be park and run or your own kind of boot camp, family boot camp, anything like that is yeah. good. And outdoor fitness, it can be absolutely embraced. Also for the well-being side of things, like take your outdoor fitness into your local wood, if you've got one, and use trees and logs and branches and all that sort of thing as a part of your concept. Climbing trees, kids aren't supposed to be climbing stuff now. So let's get them outside and maybe the warm up yeah. is to try and see if you can climb that branch. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Next one was TikTok. Talk to me about this. <laughs> so in appropriate way, um, if you can uh, engage with it and engage in the right side of things, then t t uh, TikTok is brilliant. So, for example, um, my little man, he is a rugby fan. Bath Rugby have um, f rugby drills that you can do. It's like sending two balls up in the air and, and catching them. So whatever your line of fitness is, so whether it's skills based like balls and so forth, mind dance, short dance TikToks, um, it could be, I mean, all the little challenges, the plank challenges, the squat challenges, all those routines, they're great. So definitely worth um, using TikTok, but use it to the appropriate way that you can. I love that you say that because, you know, it might be that you get inspiration from it. But yeah. we have to be mindful, don't we, of what, you know, music it's going with, what it is and stuff, and perhaps not necessarily encouraging our young kids to be on the platform themselves, but their their crazes, yeah. crazes is a probably yeah, yeah. They're they're sort of things that people are doing in the playground, you know, older siblings are doing, and and actually it's a very easy platform, isn't it, to find out some give you some ideas, let's be honest, yes. you know, some yes. dance sort of things and stuff. So yeah. <laughs> love that. <laughs> My um, um, my girls that I work with today, so they're year, what, they're year nine, ten. Um, so they love it if we can do a TikTok dance together. Um, so obviously you've got to be very careful of where they're sharing it and if they are sharing it. And sometimes I'll do the dance with them, but I won't be on the video with them. But if that's what they're doing anyway, let's embrace it. Let's have knowledge of it and an understanding of it. Yeah, because that's maybe their world, right? So, yeah, but that's that's, that's well. a, yeah, that's the wonderful thing though that you can, you know, um, take so many different things and themes, what they're into. You can they can share stuff and you know be creative themselves. That was one of the things I always used to love that they would give things a go. Yeah, they had a willingness to 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 do it. It's amazing. Yeah. Right, number three was family fitness. So again. After lockdown and some, we're used now to being insular or being with our family and having to do more things with the family. Um, and people like the whole thing of the engagement of family. So people will sit down and watch a box set together. People will sit down and, and do programs and so on. So if one person in the family, usually the mum, is trying to sort of maintain the health and well-being of the family, try and do things all together as the family fitness. So it can be just mm. simple things like a family boot camp or everyone's gonna go out on the bike together, um, but engaging it all together. So you haven't got one person doing there and one person doing there. Yeah, absolutely. I get it 100%. And, um, you know, some of those sort of, I get that adults sometimes want to exercise on their own, that yeah. they've got time to do that and kids, you know kids coming into um to fitness sessions and stuff it's a it's a very different thing because they're having to fit into the adult type class but actually doing it all together is is a wonderful thing which leads me on to the next one which was about inclusive fitness yeah so again interestingly and really nice and as it should be and again this is probably just because we're seeing it so much more on tv we're used to seeing people with different levels of um ability um, whether that be a physical ability or um an ability with eyesight or, or, or whatever it may be so we're seeing yeah. so much more of that and um for instance if you go into a restaurant you know you cannot get away with not having facilities for um 
um, impairment of ear of hearing or a, a disabled toilet you know you're just used to seeing it and so our sessions that we do should be as much as possible inclusive of everyone whatever their disability is whether it's in a physical form or a form that we can't necessarily see absolutely 100 percent. and i think it sort of brings me back to this thing of the sort of diverse approach as well so using you know um things and i you know when i used to to work with kids with a whole range of different things going on for them you're you're right what you said earlier speaking to their main caregiver speaking to the staff if they've got the time and that handover which is often quite quick let's be honest um we're very but used it was to seeing it, it sorry we're used yeah, to seeing we it now as well because strictly um, last year they had the lady Brilliant. from EastEnders with the hearing impairment. Um, we've already seen many of these athletes on blades coming up at the same level. So I think we're, we're yes. getting there and soon inclusivity will just be a thing. It won't even be a separate thing. It's just what it is. Yes, absolutely. But we have to keep on working towards that, don't we? We have to keep on striving uh, to make sure that we're making those provisions. Um, an inclusive thing it, I don't think should be about a reaction, you mm. know, oh, there's a kid with this, therefore yeah. I must adapt in this way. It should just be, you know, and that, 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 that again, takes more preparation and stuff. I think what that does is it also um, helps kids understand the idea of inclusivity. Mm. Um, you know, I, I, of course, it's more normalized within their school and stuff, but the, the provision is it's it's just it's such a sort of a broad thing I, I think we have a huge responsibility to do that mm. when I what I was um about to say was that when I worked with kids with a whole range of things I would actually ask them as well what they like to do what they wanted to be able to do what they were able to, you know and it's it's a really beautiful thing you've got a kid there with a voice you know most of the time being able to vocalize what they would like to do in yes. some way you know and, and I think that's really important so that's number four so number five was mindfulness gratitude and kindness so again in the schools the children are very much um, used to being mindful uh, lots of them will do um, gratitude mindfulness sessions as as almost like you've just come back in after play, let's just have a couple minutes of calming down. We've always done it, you and I, when we were at school, it would have been, you had a little lie down, didn't you, after lunch or reading a book or something like that. So it's always there, but they're now used to seeing it even more so. So there's so many apps and so forth that you can get for gratitude, mindfulness, that kind of thing. And the events that can go with it, like the, the yoga retreats, the little all day weekend retreats, these are now very much more open to children and family coming as a unit and thinking mm -hmm. about these things. Yeah, I think it's um, key as well that we if we're trying to help kids be fitter and stronger and all of these things and stuff, these skills are so fundamental. You know, it's kind of like I always used to sort of think it's very weird expecting children to be able to calm themselves down when they've not learned the skill, you know. Gratitude is an, an incredible, incredibly powerful practice that if we can incorporate it. But to suddenly, you know, to expect an adult to embed that's quite hard. But yeah. if, if they've done it, if they've done it and it's just, you know, they see the power of it or it doesn't always have to be called that no. thing, does it? It can just say it can just be, you know, say three, tell tell your mate three things that you're, you know, you're happy you've seen today or, or whatever it is. Yeah, um, but it's, um, it's it's really key. Sorry, we we see that in sports coaching already. When we're getting the, the children, if they've played a game, they do, um, uh, you know, they did three good strikes, or that was a great penalty there, or the layup to that shot. So we do that already a lot in sports coaching. Um, you know, player feedback, that sort of thing. Um, so that's quite handy. And then also the other thing I was going to say, it's so important that we add in the mindfulness simply because what with mobile phones, social media and so on, some of our older children are just being bombarded and there's no time for them ever to escape from it. So, you know, when we were at school, the, you know, the phone, there was no phones, was there? And, you know, perhaps the nye, 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 nye that would go on would finish, but now it continues going on and there's no release from them. So again, back in the day, the news, for example, the news would be on at tea time. 
and usually at tea time you'd all sit together and watch news and if there was something that was so, uh, a little bit sad or horrific or something that happening usually your parents were there then to talk to you about this now news 24 7 the kids can Absolutely. never get away from it so it's yeah. always there so if we're giving them those skills to think okay well that's quite a horrible thing or that or for instance the earthquakes that we've just seen you know it they're being bombarded if we've given them the skills to understand that what's being done and can be done then they can remove themselves from that yeah really important practice yeah um and, and actually something that can be you know used from very early on with kids you just maybe short amounts of time and a different way of doing but like say some great apps to give you some sort of insight and stuff like that okay private swimming pools you've got down at number six what you would you got that for <laughs> well it's so uh, i don't know if this is probably a national thing but in our area there's lots and lots of little private swimming pools as in people have got their own pool in their house or garden or whatever it may be um and our local pool for example they've got to hit targets on prices it's a council run um center it, it's lost funding and, and it's an expensive thing for the council to to run so um private pools obviously you've got to have an agreement with the owner and and you know that sort of contract that kind of thing but i have found a couple of private pools in my area that have been ideal for aqua aerobic classes and I go and deliver aqua aerobics to a much more um, smaller group. There's only usually between eight to 10 ladies, but because the pool is private and how can I put it? Probably a lot nicer than my council run one and it's not cold um, and the changing facility is nice. The ladies there are, are more than willing to pay just that little bit extra money to have a more an exclusive session. So this is really great if you've got air, pools in your area and you're a swimming instructor for example to diversify mm -hmm. and take your sessions to a nicer pool or a more accessible pool because some of these pools are sort of out in uh, villages like where I'm uh, sort of out in villages yes. but lots of people come into town to go to a pool so now they don't have to they might just have to go to their next village I like that I like that a lot I, I used to love teaching aqua actually yeah uh it's such a great hard work hard yes. work but yeah. you know a, a great thing and a lot of people love it so um we've got family fitness festivals written down as our next one so you sort of said about things like yoga retreat things what's what's an example of a family fitness festival well we're all very used to now seeing um park run we're all very used to seeing things like tough mudder um and the inflatable runs and mud run and um, you anything you want to do you can do it now can't you so there's runs that you can take your dog on for example there's the inflatable and, and charity ones and non-charity ones but all these festivals and day events are getting bigger and bigger um so for example i have worked at and attend as a as a customer camp festival uh down mm -hmm. in lower mm -hmm. cove and you can do everything there. We can um, go skating, we can do the scooting, we can do a climbing wall, we can go hula hooping, I could do circus stills, I can do yoga and all of this sort of stuff. I mean, obviously it's mm. a, a music festival it's attached, but it doesn't have to necessarily be. Sure. Family festivals, the beauty of those is you can start them off yourself unique and just have maybe as a day festival with just different activities a carousel of activities because people will give them a go nice and i suppose you could just get like someone doing circus skills and you could do it that doesn't have to just sit with you does it like yeah. that like that a lot yeah. yeah um one of the things that as well that um i used to do was you know there might be little i don't know country shows or whatever and you might get like a little group together and they've learned a dance move and they do like a little you know demonstration or whatever and that sort of is a great thing for them to do if they like it um yeah. but it also promotes and other people join in but it also promotes i guess your brand as well because you're showing up and you know people might go oh i'd like my kid to do a session like that so yeah, yeah I, did but you I, see I like the, um, yeah did you see the brits last week i they did have had... watch it yet yeah they had modern Morris dancing on. Stop so, that. you know, Morris dancing. With yes, of course. The bells and the, and the scarves. So there's a, uh, there's a dance group, group up in Gloucestershire and they 
um, were the support act, I can't remember who for now, and they did modern Morris dancing, so still bells, still scarves, but just a little bit funkier. Now, traditionally, we'd only ever think of that in a, in a village show, some sort of mature gentleman. People think it's a bit odd, but there you go. If you've got something that is engaging and people enjoy, it's a little bit different, a little bit quirky, they'll be there. Love that. Love that. I would never have thought that Morris dancing Morris was dancing made on the Brits. Come back. Love that. I love that. I know that. <laughs> I'm going to watch. Um, okay, so we've got... Um, fit, oh, so we've said fitness obstacle courses and races. I think we've sort of covered that one. But pop-up events. What are pop-up events? So again, where um, after the lockdown, COVID, some people had to lose their businesses, didn't they? Or, or business mm -hmm. has transformed. So again, s a couple of, in our area, dance schools are now no longer because it's another it's thing for people to find money for and premises and and so forth so i'm seeing lots of people now doing pop-up little sessions so like a i know like a pop-up fitness only six yeah. weeks it's going to be in this location here whilst the weather is good or whatever it may be or um sort of pop-up sessions where you do two weeks and you have two weeks off and two weeks so people can scale that in and fit them into their busy lifestyles and also pop-up fitness events are something you might like to try, but you don't want to commit to. Um, going back to one of the festivals, one of the best things I saw were the spinning bikes in the back of like a cargo container. And you were able to do spinning session in the cargo container, but then that cargo container then went around to different locations. So the spin class went Clever. to the location rather than you go to the location. Love it's that. When when um you just said that, don't know why, but I suddenly got a memory of doing silent disco with kids. Brilliant. Yes. So yeah. you have a microphone and you're teaching and they've all got music on. And it's brilliant because there's no noise for anybody else. Oh, my word. People yeah. absolutely loved it um, at, at big events and the waiting list for that. Um, because it was something new and stuff it was different. that was a bit different yeah but yes. I'm still thinking about the Morris dancing gotta be honest um so smart tech fitness how can we incorporate so again, that that's number 10 and my number 10 you can do it well and, and that's the beauty of these that we've been doing it doesn't have to be necessarily with kids fitness it can be of anything so we know that we've seen smart tech fitness with our our phones telling us how many um steps we've taken and what mileage and what our oxygen is doing but now with smart tech fitness there's things like again going back to my son plays rugby um mouth guards are now being um manufactured with sensors in them so that when um, kids are taking uh, impacts to heads, mm -hmm. they can see and read how much impact has happened. So then they're able to uh, work out if there's going to be risk of concussion and that sort of thing. And so all this information, this data that's going to be collected will help them forward. Because as we've seen, um, unfortunately, some of the impact sports and so on, we have these later on years of um, you know memory loss and that kind of thing. And, and so mm -hmm. all that data is still being um collaborate together but that kind of tech now if we get the kids wearing it now used to it now just think the information we're going to have in 20 years time and that can be wow. like i said that was just the one thing that i've stopped on but tennis rackets with information in the handles of where the strength of your swing is yeah i didn't know that about the the gum shield um, mm. what do you call it matt is it a gum shield or a mouth shield whatever that uh, thing gum, is yeah 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 gum shield. i think you call it a gum shield don't you which yeah. is ironic because be difference. actually yeah. because uh, ironically it's about also protecting the teeth sorry i've just just suddenly hit the word that out okay so uh phenomenal year 2022 for girls and women so you're saying sort of predictions right it so can only tell get me about bigger that. it can only get bigger can't it um, now in the media, we're so used to seeing uh, ladies football now as a normal thing on a Saturday afternoon. Uh, again, perhaps my knowledge just because the area that I'm in, but rugby, ladies, uh, ladies rugby's the sevens, big, big, big thing. And I think that's just going to keep filtering down. Very normal for women to be playing sport, very normal to see different women mm -hmm. in looking in different ways playing sport and um lots of funding there now which will get filtered down to the school so again in my day and age girls weren't allowed to play football now you couldn't no. get away with that in a school no absolutely 
But I think it's, um, you know, some of the interesting information that came out after the Paralympics, you know, um, was that there was this real, or after the Olympics and stuff, there was this real sense that people wanted to be active. But actually, you know, it was a shame because there wasn't as much as we hoped for. And so we actually have a duty, don't we, to actually capitalise on this yes. amazing I mean, it seems sort of sad to say trailblazing because it should have been, you know, part of it anyway. But we do know, don't we, that um, there is a sort of um, girls, you know, don't exercise as much. It's sort of pop out of exercise a bit. And so, yeah, this is this is a great opportunity, isn't it? For yeah. getting, you know, and I think when they see more people in this hemisphere of it all doing stuff, so more women different looking women, you know, all doing their activity, their sport. Um, and the, for, if you are in a fitness instructor or whatever, and you're thinking, yeah, that I'm really interested, there is money there. So the national governing bodies will have funding. And then there will be things like, um, in my area, um, it's called Wiltshire Active Sports Partnership, but there's sports partnerships everywhere that will be able to access money for sports that are on the rise, such as women's cricket or, or golf or whatever it may be. So pockets of funding is there. So definitely worth yeah. taking that time. Just a bit of Googling. Sport England uh, are always pushing out funding for what they can to sort of keep these things in the forefront of people's information. Absolutely. I think, you know, it's it's a lot of the time when I first started out I didn't even think about things like that I thought I had to do it all for myself yeah. um what whilst working with kids I did um realize that I would subsidize some places as well because I wanted to make sure that everybody um were, could be involved um mm -hmm. where they where they they one of the things I was going to say as talking through this and we were talking about why people might or haven't yet stepped into kids fitness one of the things that I do know in our industry is that, you know, some, not sometimes, there's often talk about people aren't pay, getting paid enough money. My experience of working with kids is actually it paid really well um, in comparison. Like if I went into a school, I was, I was shocked, you know, I was, how much I could be charging. Actually, yes. what I was offered not what I was, I didn't put my, I didn't go in there and go, right, you need to pay me this. They'd be like, well, we'll pay you this. And I'd be like, really? Yeah. Um, the schools what's your, have what's your funding. Experience? Yes. yes. The schools it. have funding. Now, at the moment, um, well, everywhere's like this. So there is, uh, each school can get up to, now let me get this right. Da, 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 da. Is it £8,000 a year now? I've got gone. Anyway, so there's a certain amount of funding that each school can get. And then this will be increased on however many kids are in their school. Now, this is called school sports funding. And this funding is, in theory, ring-fenced to make sure that the school are doing activities or bringing in coaches and also education to keep this going. So if the coach leaves, then that information doesn't leave with the coach. So this is this ring fence funding. It goes year on year. Um, so also, again, it, it's we have to see what happens for this year. But there is that funding there. Um, so that's within schools. But then we know it. I mean, so I do kids parties at the weekend. Now, my parents will pay anything <laughs> to make sure that their child has an enjoyable party. Uh, and whether that be you're delivering, I don't know, a sports party, a balls party, I've done cheerleading parties, dance parties. Um, so parents will be quite happy to pay that because they want someone who's got the skills, who's got the drive, who's got the motivation just to come in and go, right, kids, come on, let's do this. Absolutely. And um, another thing that, I, so I used to go into the schools, did do parties from time to time, but after school clubs, I, I would go into a school and say, I'll do an after school club. They're desperate for that. Yeah. Um, and the parents were desperate for that. And I was charging per child. And I was like, you know, it, it would, I don't, I didn't do it for the money, but it was way more well paid yeah. than some of my other sessions. It yeah. was hard. There's no, there's, there's no, you know, it's no sort of like you say resting on your laurels. It's you know you've got to be super prepped. You've got to want to do it. So what? Do you, how do you 
keep yourself motivated to be present for those kids showing up prepared you you obviously mentioned passion and and stuff like that but what actually keeps the dance lady wanting to be the dance yeah. lady oh um well a mixture of things so uh very important to look after my own mental health and my own physical health so even in the i've had a couple of traumatic years in the past you just have to get going you have to keep going and you have to do whatever it is that you need to do to keep yourself there so good diet good sleep exercising getting outside making sure that you're educating yourself all the time so i'm listening to different pod podcasts and reading books and stuff like that so i'm not just me um i'm working with different kids i find as to keep myself um tip top i'm working with kids that are challenging as well because then yeah. they make you find out what your skills are and so that can only ever help increase your motivation because if you work if you're working with a child who is a bit insular who's refusing to go to school perhaps or just disengaged and if even if you can just get them to spend some time with you and maybe it'd be simple as go for a walk brilliant yeah, absolutely absolutely it can be really life-changing can't it yeah well you know one of the things that i i recognized in my own career was when the the, the beautiful thing of work about working with kids is it's at different times to when you might work with adults you know this is in school time in school holidays and stuff like that but what i you know in hindsight i realized i just ended up squashing in even more because i could do it at that time so yeah. have you got any thoughts about because my view is you can do too much um regardless of good nutrition looking after your mental health i think you can do too much so how do you think you can maximize um you know your kind of i don't know uh, effect tough. yeah yeah how can you how yeah. can you affect as many kids as possible but not be working, you know, 60 hours a week, you know, yeah. and earning enough. And uh, yeah, well, then that's when your online comes in. You know, we're now used to having a digital platform coming back to the TikTok. If you're just doing uh, a simple little challenge of fitness exercises that you could try for a week. So things that aren't taking up your whole time, but just little nuggets of fitness information. And then that would lead into perhaps, I don't know, you having a little mini festival because you've got so many people following you locally that they then want to come to something so just yeah the, the the online world is something that can be definitely developed uh for instance my lesson plans um although really hard to get everything that's going on in my head down onto paper um yeah. but now people can buy my uh, say pancake day lesson plan that i've got um Brilliant. and so all your knowledge and all your information what whatever level you are on whatever you do if you can get that down into some sort of format that other people can take away right and that's what you're doing well and that's how i ended up following you and stuff because you're supporting the community who are doing that so you're kind of you're doing more than just reaching lots of kids you're trying to support the rest of the community and i think that's really you know an important thing to do yes. so tell people where they can follow you you know you're, you're saying that you've got resources available for that don't be shy in saying that this is an opportunity <laughs> because you know people need it because sometimes people, you're like, what, the, what the hell you know i, I yeah. need to come up with something and it's got to be around i mean i've seen things it's got to be you know i've got to come up with a warm-up that's to do with superheroes and, yes. and people come in with ideas so yeah tell people where they can follow you where they could maybe look at those resources get support from you i mean do you ever mentor people Tell us, tell us more. So, um, like I said, on my branding that I had cost nothing to do, <laughs> if you put in uh, the dance lady, I will appear on Instagram, on YouTube and on Facebook. Um, so that's dance lady. And then also I have um, a kids fitness instructors Facebook group. And it's predominantly for people that teach kids, whether that be in gyms or um, you know, specific things like parties, da da da. And as you said, people will go, my topic is superheroes, what can I do? Um, and there's loads of us on there and all of us have got our own sort of different um, mm -hmm. specialities, if we like. Some people are, are better with group fitness, some people do um, uh, SEN, got more sort of stuff. So there's always an, an expert there who can go try this. And the things like you said, you know, 
one of the questions, how much do you charge? It's so broad, but those are those questions are answered in that group. And it's a lovely group as well. Good fun group. It, it is. And, and that's one of the things that I, I found really great about it. There's a lot of sharing. Okay. Not every group I've seen on Facebook, you know, is is all about sharing. Sometimes there's a bit of taking down of other people. And that seems such a shame. I've never seen that. I felt like a real sharing, safe place. Yeah. People are clearly there motivated to make a difference to kids' lives. And it shines through with all the Good. interactions that I've ever seen. So kudos to you. So oh, they can follow you. So just say what the Facebook, I mean, we'll put a link to it, but what was the Facebook page called again? The, group? the Dance Lady. Okay, perfect. Excellent. Oh, hang on. No, the group, because I think it's the oh, UK. Kids, that one. Yeah, uh, kids Fitness Instructors, not UK, so Kids Fitness Instructors. That's yeah. the one. That's the one. Okay, thank you. Because I was so... <laughs> Sorry. I've got this wrong. I just see things come through. You know what it's like on Facebook. Oh, so, that's it. And there's so many groups, isn't there? Absolutely. So final words for people coming into the industry and Join for us. people in... Oh, love that. Join us. Join you, us. Join yeah. us. Give it, I would say give it a go and join us. Um, and when you're in, you'll get hooked in and consistency and keep showing up. Um, there are some characters in the fitness world who claim to be uh, all about PE and stuff during lockdown. We've not seen them since those of us that are in there we need to keep those kids going we need to keep them infused because if we give them a good experience now that's only going to keep them in steadfast for the gyms and the classes and taking up running and whatever it might be so absolutely go for it give it a go you you, you will enjoy it absolutely i love that join us because it's a community right and yeah. it's you know it's really really needed and without question you are not going to be short for kids who need to exercise you're not going to be short for creating sessions parties whatever you're not going to be like mm, what do i do what how do, I do? Yeah, you know it really is an amazing space to be in and stuff and i, I want to thank you for creating that space for you know supporting people and the community oh. for you know pushing it forwards kudos to you honestly that's amazing um People follow her, listen out for those predictions. I'd really like to see everyone's TikTok dances. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. what I'm after. Yeah, absolutely. So, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to another webcast. Um, it's really exciting at Fit Pro that we get to speak to just a huge range, huge range of um, people who are doing amazing things for the industry. So it's a pleasure to talk about kids' fitness because it's certainly been something that's been very important to me for a long, long time. I don't work it anymore. So I wanted to bring on somebody who's in it and doing a smashing job. So Caroline, it's been a pleasure to have you on. Thank you so, so much. Can I pass that back as well? Can I say thank you to you and thank you to Fitbro who have been with me since my journey started in 1994 in the conventions and so on at Loughborough and so on. And, and I was inspired by a gentleman called Andy Jackson who uh, did kids fitness and that's where that started me um, and we've seen lots of things in the fitness industry come and go but for myself fit pro has always been there so thanks fit pro well listen i will say that to everybody else on the team but that's it's gorgeous that you would say that you know it's very key for us that we're supporting the industry and if we've been part of your amazing journey then it's an absolute pleasure so yay yay us and yay you this is amazing it's been a pleasure to talk to you please do check out what caroline's doing and i look forward to you know chatting with other people in the industry if there's things that you would like for us to um you know look at we can get caroline back on again if you've got specific questions um just reach out to us gang because we're very excited to do you know chit chats about amazing stuff so Thanks again for tuning in, everybody, and thank you, the dance lady. <laughs>